It's five o'clock in pirate country, and it's time to get pumped up with the P-Man. Hit the door and hit the road. 94.3 The Game is going to get you home, and the P-Man's not holding back. Yes! Yes! Pirates win! Pirates win! Bring on the Patrick Johnson Show on 94.3 The Game. Holy mackerel! Oh my goodness! The flagship station of the ECU Pirates. Hey, yes, 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 TGIF, it's Friday, we made it, the Get You to the Weekend edition of the Patrick Johnson Shoe. Welcome to you, thanks for being with us, live-ish, in color at least from the Working Man's Beach as the uh, color teenies flow across the uh, airwaves here on this uh, Friday. It's a uh, baseball Friday for ECU on the road. We'll get into that in a little bit. Uh, we've got a clip from uh, a special guest from this morning's Talk of the Town. We're going to have a Hold My Beer segment today with uh, my favorite favorite sales weasel and fellow Taurus birthday brother, Bradley Durrett. And uh, Rob Maloney will join us, Pitt County Director of Athletics. So as you've got a lot to get into here on the show today. So thank you for being with us. Got a lot going on next week as well. We'll tell you about that if we can. Right now, we say hello to Philip the Ref Pilkington from uh, 94.3 The Game and ECU Sports Network fame. Uh, Pilk, I am firmly off. the. Ba- in fact, I'm in mockery mode of your Carolina Hurricanes right now. Mine? You must be talking to the audience. You addressed me I'm, and then said your. I'm a little confused. Right. I'm. They're not mine because they are choking dogs as they lost in <laughs> overtime last night. I get, I, I've said this many times over the last decade and a half, and I get to say it again, LeBlanc was wrong. And these guys, I watched in the first period, and it was the struggle bus even to have a one nothing lead after one. There was fights, which was the exciting, only exciting part. And then, obviously, I went to sleep because uh, they play this stuff too late. Too late. Or you just go to bed too age. early. I mean, they start at 7... Is it really too late? Seven forty-five. Are you just, are you just was, an old I fart? Out. I think yeah, you're I'm, just oh, an old there, fart. There's a lot of farting, and it is uh, <laughs> probably old farting going on here at my uh, advanced age at this point. So, uh, the hurricane season likely will be over after Saturday. I don't see any way that they will uh, maneuver around uh, this. And then your Celtics got beat. You and uh, you and uh, Pirate Al's kid there. His uh, Celtics and your Celtics got beat. So there you go. Your hey, old you remembered CJ the Pirate as a Celtics CJ fan. CJ the he, Pirate, he will be, yes. He will be proud of you for that. And and Dom's a Celtics fan, too. You remember his mom's ah, from Boston. That's right. Yeah. So you guys, Celtics, go down in flames. They do. Both night. both one seeds dropped game two last night. So, um, hey, it's not a series till the away team wins. The you know the lower seed wins one on the road. So we get a series with the Mavs and the Thunder, and we get a series with the Cavs and the Celtics. So it'll be fun. So They've got to try and win one on the road to get it back. Did you hear the post-game interview? I should have got you to pull this audio. The post. I don't know if we can play it, though, on the air. But uh, the post-game interview with Luca, did you hear that? I, I saw where it was up, but I have not. I've been doing other things so this morning. So somebody, somebody, I guess, I don't know if they plugged a phone into the Bluetooth or something, but it. Uh, let's just say you heard cries of excitement from a woman as if someone may have been watching something on their phone, and when it hit the Bluetooth speaker, it interrupted Luca. Uh, you know what I'm talking about? Have, yeah, have I painted yes, a vivid enough picture? Pa- you yes. painted a vivid enough picture. I, I get what you're yeah. saying. It's, it's a, it was, uh, I don't know if we could, probably don't need to play that on the air. I, I just, yeah. I want to go into the weekend clean and uh, hopefully nobody. And not having me. Henry call us here at, you know, 5.04 on a right. Friday afternoon yelling at us for what we've right. done. Well, he wouldn't, but somebody would. Um, let me say this. Maybe Dr. No. Let me say this. Thank you uh, to all the moms out there. Happy Mother's Day. Uh, Mama Johnson in particular, the only person that cares I'm ever on the air. It's my mom. And it's your mom. That's the only person who ever cares about anything you're doing. So be good to your moms this particular uh, Mother's Day. And uh, I'm looking forward to spending some time with Mama J this weekend. I think she's getting to me eventually after the grandkids, but that's okay. I'm not jealous of six-year-olds and 10-year-olds. No, not at all. Not at all. 
Um, oh, another thing going down this weekend, uh, Pilk, I've often said I grew up in an idealistic uh, environment. I an idealistic environment would have been the 50s when you could just roam about the streets and go ride your bike, and when the street lamps turned on, that's when you came home. And that's, that's the what idealistic I had, env- environment. That's what I had growing up. We lived in a uh, suburban uh, country neighborhood of Kinston, and that's how it was in my hood. Uh, and I grew up in, in Kinston when I mean, my parents have been married for 50 years or so. And, you know, again, an idealistic upbringing, I had a great education, which I didn't take advantage of, but I had great educational opportunities. And, uh, I grew up in Kinston when it was a cool place to grow up there. I mean, you had the mall, which was the first mall east of I-95 Vernon park mall. Uh, you had kind of one of every restaurant when the restaurants were good. It was a really good place to grow up. They had factories that uh, employed people. Tobacco was still a big deal. So this weekend, part of that idealistic growing up was uh, the Fairfield Recreation Center, where my dad got his start working after he got out of ECU. And uh, they're having their reunion weekend this weekend. So shout out to all of the Fairfield people going to that there. You know, Mona, my my first job, do you know what it was, Pilk? Sweeping the floor at the uh, at the, the gym? <laughs> no, but there was a great guy named Randy Randolph who was, uh, I think, played uh, Negro League ball. And uh, he was, or was in the military or something, but he was the uh, custodian at the rec center, and I would pal around with him. He was a great guy to me as a little kid. And, uh, but I would do public address and scorekeeping. Actually, I was do, it was hired as a scorekeeper, but you had to do public address. And I did that at Banks Elementary at the uh, LaGrange and Banks Rec Center League. And then eventually I got to go to Fairfield and do the PA there, along with my guy, Corey Fader. And that was, uh, Fairfield was like the Yankee Stadium of uh, Bambino Ballparks in Lenore County. It was, uh, it was the place to be. So that was uh, part of my idealistic growing up, Pilk. So wait, how old were you when you started PA? 15. Okay. I would ride my bike to Banks, and then eventually I got my license. Okay, that's good. Because I was about to say, you can't start your announcing career prior to the voice change. Because when you go through the it's cute when you're young, and then when you go through the voice change, you're just right. going to lose all your audience. See, I, I didn't start till I was 18, so that's when I got my first gig. Well, so your I voice changed at uh, 17 and a half, from what I understand. So. No, no, I was the early bloomer. I was the one that got picked on in second grade for already having acne, and then they came back what? later and told me they were jealous. Yeah, man, I had a full beard at the end of eighth grade. I was the opposite. Yeah. I don't know what they too were feeding you, me. Too bad you were 16 at, uh, in eighth grade. But that's a, you know, hey, we're going to overlook hey. that fact. We're going to overlook right. that fact. We're going <laughs> to overlook that fact. All right. Um, Pirates are playing at uh, Tulane. This weekend, they lead UTSA by three games in the standings. Uh, if they sweep the green wave, which I think is going to be tough because I understand there might be a little sickness, a little illness going through the team right now. Uh, if they sweep the green wave, uh, that would be uh, guarantee them a, a at least a share of their fifth straight uh, American Athletic Conference regular season championship. UTSA has uh, South Florida this weekend in San Antonio. Pirates are coming off uh, defeat at the hands of number nine Duke, five to two, in front of a crowd of over fifty four hundred on Tuesday. Uh, it'll be Trey Savage going against. Uh, I love this name for the lefty, Luke Flata, three and three at the five oh three ERA. Luke Flata, and then Chandler Welch will go tomorrow. We'll see if Zach Root will be the uh, pitcher. Green Wave are twenty six and twenty three, and a game under at ten and eleven in the American. They lost two or three to Memphis at home last weekend. They're tied with Wichita State and FAU for fourth place in the standing somehow. Uh, 36-36, the series all-time between ECU and Tulane. And they split four meetings a season ago. Uh, Pirates took two of three from the Greenies in Greenville. And then Tulane uh, downed ECU in the title game for the AAC. Came in with 14 wins in the Clearwater and ended up going to the NCAA tournament. Cliff Godwin, 388 wins. Second on the ECU uh, wins list all time. 
as uh, he is uh, only surpassed by the great Keith LeClaire. So, uh, speaking of Cliff Godwin, he and our friend Christy Overton Johnson have a big event cooked up uh, that they have uh, created. It's coming in the fall. Earlier today on Talk of the Town, Christy Overton Johnson joined us on set with the Big Hen, and she discussed uh, an event that her and Cliff Godwin have planned. The last couple of years, I've had we had Daryl Strawberry come. That was at the lake. Last year, we went out to the park and we had a festival of hope. And during that event, I just saw in my mind a big old white tent in the middle of the field on some property that our family owns with Harvey Lewis and my dad, um, right there on Fire Tower. Right in front of Lake Fire Tower, where we walk in front of champions. Yes. Right and behind the fire tower. We're putting a big old white tent, and we're going to have a three-day, five-event um, program called A Revival of Hope. And we're just making space. Um, yesterday, I was walking. I thought, you know, we're making space for God to move, making space for people to come from all walks of life, denominations. If you don't know anything about God, but you're just looking for some hope, maybe you're tired, you're weary, you're confused, you're frustrated with this world. I've got some wonderful people that are coming. We'll have three nights, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday night, September 19th through the 21st. But we're also having real laid back um, women's conference Friday morning and a men's conference Saturday morning. And that's where Cliff Godwin's going to do an interview with a friend of mine, Matt, and um, Dr. Bird also. They're going to share. Um, Parker's dad? Parker's dad. Yeah. And because we've all heard Parker's story, but the. the Park, for folks who know, I think everybody knows, but yeah. for folks who don't, Parker Bird, the uh, ECU uh, baseball player who lost his leg. Mm -hmm. And I know he was a big part of what you did last year. Yeah. And, and he came out to the Daryl Strawberry event, too. He did. That's actually the first time I'd met him. And that day when he came out, he was actually, <laughs> had just come from the hospital on, his, on yet another surgery. And yeah. he had to meet Daryl Strawberry. He had to be yeah. there. Yeah. And that's just the kind of guy he is. I see him, I mean, watching his recovery on Young at Young's Therapy when I was there, it just motivated me to go and... Mm -hmm to press on and to do the work. You know, one of the great stories this year, we always hear these great stories in our Children's Miracle Network Radiothon, but one of the best ones was the kid from Raleigh who was in a boating accident last summer. I don't know if you know the story or not. Mm -hmm. He was in a boating accident, and um, he ended up in the hospital, and I think he lost his, I think he lost his arm. Mm -hmm. Wasn't it his arm, Michael? Uh, and Parker Church. came to the hospital, hospital. to visit I with him, hear that. and the father was being interviewed on the radiothon, and he said, so I wanted to give them some time. So my wife and I left and left Parker there and said goodbye to him, and we left, and we went and ate lunch, and then we went and did some shopping. We came back several hours later, and Parker was still sitting there in mm -hmm. the hospital room with a kid, 14-year-old mm -hmm. boy from Raleigh. Yeah. Parker's a real deal, yeah. as are so many of those that baseball team's amazing. Yeah. And uh, his parents have just, and his whole family, the support that they've given Parker. And so we're going to interview um, at the women's conference, Parker's mom. And um, and we have April Rains. I don't know if you remember April. I know April well, yeah. Yeah. And so April, a lot of people don't know. I mean, growing up, you know, her father was an evangelist who actually spent time in prison. Mm hmm and um and she's had a lot of loss in her life personally and she's going to share with the women about um just like parker's mom about well, how do you handle loss when life goes astray mm -hmm. and also you know for parker's dad dr jeff bird what do you do like that was his dream that died too when parker lost his leg that was his dream because oh, a lot sure. of times as parents, we have these big dreams for our kids. And that, when, kid, that kid was a highly recruited kid in high school, one of the top recruits in the state. And, yeah. uh, and you know, I, I know from just watching my children and grandchildren play, you you know, you live and die with them. Yeah. Well, they're going to help the men are they're going to help those men navigate um, through loss, through you know, whether it's your marriage or whatever it is, um, navigate those things. I don't know if you heard um, Cliff Godwin's. Um, can I get a good amen podcast with uh, my pastor, Aaron Kennedy? It is something. And he gets really raw. And the life changes just happened because of the things that he walked through with Parker. But 
the surrendering of his life to God in December, really, just this past year, and the revelations that he's had about his life and the hurt that he had carried, um, which impacted how he treated people, women, all these things. Like, mm -hmm. he gets really raw. And so I think that's my whole ministry. I always tell people it's not like the perfect ministry, the fanciest, but it is authentic. And we like to talk about the things that people just don't want to talk about. I don't want to run out of time. So this is going to happen in September uh -huh. and it's going to be, uh, on the property behind the fire tower on fire mm -hmm. tower road. Yeah. You, you won't be able to miss a big, a big old white tent Yeah, come rain or shine. Yeah. Um, and ignite church there behind it is, uh, is helping support it. Open door. Uh, so many churches here locally. We're just, we're grateful for the support, but it's really about just coming, gathering together and um, kind of a reset right before those elections. Praying for our country, <laughs> our communities. We're, we're going to need it. We're going to need it. Um, yeah. But someone, as yesterday, I said something to someone. I said, man, it's a small world. He's because the connections and the things that happen. Because no, it's a big God. And so, yeah, it's a dark, dark time. But yeah, we it ain't over, Henry. All right, we're going to have Christy Overton Johnson on next week on the show, too. We'll talk more about that. Plus, Parker Bird is scheduled to be with us Tuesday, leading into the uh, game against Campbell. All right, uh, stay tuned. We're going to hit a break. We'll come back, shift gears, hold my beer with a special guest straight ahead. Save thousands with a great rate. Get 0% financing at Greenville Toyota during the Great Rate Sales Event. Shop our massive inventory of new Toyotas, available as low as 0%. Hurry to Greenville Toyota today, where our volume saves you money. Acre Station. Do you have something you need to get off your chest? Get off your chest. I am not here for rage. I'm here for revenge. Did your favorite team blow another game? They are who we thought they were. And we let him off the hook! Or is there just something that's driving you crazy? I'm as mad as hell, and I'm not gonna take this anymore! It's time to let it all out. You have made me very angry. Very angry indeed. With another edition of Hold My Beer. Hold my beer! All right, hold my beer. Uh, we uh, have not done this in a minute. Let's uh, welcome to the Deos, my favorite sales weasel with IBX Media, Bradley Durrett, ladies and gentlemen. Well, it's a pleasure to be uh, here with here. you today. Brad Durrett is not, he used to be on the air all the time back in the old New East Communications days when there were about two employees. But now we're a conglomerate. We're yes. corporate, baby. And now Bradley could just concentrate on sales and having the P-Man make dough, which is what I'm here to do is just try Thank to make you, as much I dough. I really, I really appreciate it. Um, uh, so anyway, for my whole my beer segment today. No, 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 no. Wait no, a second. Wait no. a second. Whoa, whoa. Oh, there's more. Hang on. Uh, Hang on. What? Well, you, what's, it's what's a what on? grinds my gear segment. And uh, but he, it sounds like he wants to go first. So, Pilk, what? Should we? Let, I, I thought we would have you go first, Pilk, to give Brad an example of how it works. But I think he's ready to go. So let's I think let him he is. Go he's there. jumping the gun. Go ahead, Brad. All right. You got to say, hold my beer, and then you jump in, Brad. So go hold, ahead. Hold, hold my beer. Okay. <laughs> well, this is, is there beer in that tumbler is the question. That's it's, it's five o'clock somewhere. Yeah. Uh, okay. All right. So anyway, this past Tuesday, May 7th, for the past 46 years or so, I've shared my birthday with our host, Patrick Johnson, and yes. I've been honored to do that as a fellow Taurus. We Tauruses are patient can be a little stubborn, sensual, mm, but dependable, but good, sensual. solid, earthy citizens, right? Yes. Do you right. agree so good. far? Salt well, of the earth, yes. Yeah. Patrick's patient? What? I got... Uh, <laughs> very patient. Very I, patient. I've got no beef so far, right? But the problem comes in is because I just turned 58, right? Ooh. So the last year when people ask me, how old a boy are you anyway? I would say, would turn with a, what I thought to be a humorous quip. Well, I'm like the sauce in the Chevy. I'm 57. <laughs> well, <laughs> wait a second. Hang on. I know. Hang on, Brad. All right, go ahead. People might have thought that was a little lame, but it did serve me well for an entire year, right? I said, sure, but, yeah. But I got nothing for 58. That's the problem. At least when I turn 59 and a half, I can draw from my 401k and my IRA 
penalty free. Yeah. But nothing to look forward to in, in as far as 58, but more aches and pains. And those weird purple things that show up on your skin. I don't even know where they come from. But anyway, that's what chaps my cheeks, grinds my gears, <laughs> boils my potatoes, <laughs> all of the above. It's not a lot, but it's all I got for today. Hold my beer. Hold my, my beer. first and last appearance for uh, Brad. <laughs> no, this was great. Give me that my was beer actually back. great. You, <laughs> you did such a good job there that it's going to expose uh, how little Pilkington and I actually put into the segment. That was great, though. <laughs> no that one has fantastic. ever put that much into the segment. I love it. Well, Miller put a lot in one the one time yeah. he was on. Mark yeah. Miller put his was pretty good. Well, I mean, when I think, Patrick Johnson asked you to, you know, to come be part of the show, I'd hate to hate to right. show up, you know, with a toothpick and a, you know, right, whatever straw hat. This yeah. was this was um, this was this is your birthday gift, Brad, being on the show. By the way, okay. all right, thank you. Um, I appreciate that. Pilk, do you have any comments for? I, I agree with. Hey, look, getting old sucks. It ain't for sissies. That's mm -hmm. what you got to know, Pilk. It ain't for sissies. No, I don't have much to say other than heck of a job with his. Uh, his outside the box thinking. I don't think anyone has ever taken that kind of approach right. to it, and I think it was the most outside the box answer, and I mean that in a one hundred percent complimented way. Philip, we'll I want to know what's irritated you this week. Oh, what's right. irritated me this oh, look week? Look at this, Brett. Taking over the show. I like over, it. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm, you're going to host for me. You're going to host for me this summer. All right, uh, <laughs> Philip the Ref Pilkington. What grinds his gears? Hold my beer, Pilkington. All right, hold my beer, East. Carolina University. Oh, no. You gave our guy, Joseph Sampson, his second diploma, and now he's leaving us. We only get him on a limited basis, and I don't get to see Joe every day, and I don't get to work with Joe every day. You know, EC, you could have failed him and kept him around for another year, but no. <laughs> you passed him on to the real world. Now he's going to go find a real job and wear a suit and a tie. And, and live life like how the American dream, and he's not going to be here partying with us every day. Hold my beer. I don't get to see Joe anymore every day. I thought it would be sports, but in a way it is because uh, we don't get to see Joey football, Joe Sampson. By the way, is Joe popular around the office, Brad? Is he a, a popular member of the team, or, or do you even know who we're talking about? Of course I know who you're talking about. <laughs> But uh, hey, look! If he's in, if he's in the building, he's a quality person. That's all I know. Okay. Well. Yeah. You sure there's just coffee in that tub? All right. No, that's uh, that's good. I I, I see I hear that what you that think right there. there is why Patrick's not ever in the building. Correct. CBD coffee. No, I'm, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah. There is there is some of that. In fact, somewhere around here, uh, a woman that works at my hairdresser it has you go to a hairdresser, me, not a barber. Yeah, I don't go to a barber. Dresser. Oh yeah, I go to a – look, you can't get this kind of quality quaff pilk by just going to Floyd the Barber. you got to go somewhere. I'm a TV star, Pilk. I just can't show up with some just, barber haircut. Did he just bash on Floyd? Yeah, I The just greatest I barber on in Mayberry? Yeah, uh, I, I bashed on the, be, on the best barber in Mayberry. Um, somewhere around here, I have some kind of organic mushroom coffee that I was given. Ooh. And apparently it helps with Mushroom digestion. Coffee. I don't know. You, you just reminded me of that. But maybe there are shrooms in it. Uh, <laughs> Sounds a, like a, it. A, a lady at the hairdresser uh, that's not my hairdresser gave it to me. All right. Hold my beer. I, of course, am, as Bradley Durrett uh, so adequately noted, am salt of the earth. I'm just like one of you. Uh, you're working class hero. I put my britches on one leg at a time like many of you. I can actually put my socks on now and not lose my breath because of East Carolina weight loss. There's a plug. And so, um, you know, I'm down here at the working man's beach with all the other salt of the earth uh, people. We're just average folks trying to make it in uh, Biden's economy. That's all, you know, they're a little political there. Stick to sports, I know. So here's what I would say as far as um, a hold my beer. Carteret County, and I'm going to be there. It looks like for the uh, for the week of the uh, Big Rock. That that looks like that's going to be a thing. So I'm excited about that. And my parents met in Carteret County as middle schoolers, and I have family that still lives in Carteret County. But when you get off of Highway 70, you start getting into the to the beach areas. You know, it's a little upper crust 
more so than here with the salt of the earth and the work in man's beach. But a staple in Moorhead City is no more. L's Drive-In has been barreled over after 65 years. It is now a pile of debris. And they're building a new L's. And I think to myself, are those shrimp burgers going to be as good when you're not using decades-old grease to fry them in? It reminds me of Christmas. How so? No L's, no L's, no L's, no L's. That's yeah. pretty good. Yeah. Thank you. That's pretty good. They do. Have- we got to get Durrett back on. <laughs> Durrett is going to co-host with you this summer, Pilkington. All right. That's how good this is. I'm, I'm good for Brad. I would love to have Brad yes. co-host. I don't oh, know what sports we talked about. I think we'll start with sports, and then we'll go off on some weird. I will say, if Brad and I are doing it, it might turn in more of a talk of the town. There'll probably be more religion and politics talked about than sports. Sure. If it's me and Brad, because our and deep aviation. philosophical religious is usually what he and I talk about when it's just the two of us. I'm a little athletically Brad- challenged anyway. <laughs> so Brad, by the way, is a uh, is a is a would you say amateur aviation guy? Is that what the be the best an yeah, enthusiast? I would, I would, yeah, private. Private pilot, a private so, yeah. aviation enthusiast. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, maybe we ought to fly somewhere, Pilkington, and do the show. And Brad, could we do the show from the airplane in the air? Is that I, anything's that possible? Work? If I stay under three thousand feet, we get a good cell signal. There you go. All right. Well, let's work on that, and let's leave send Pilkington up because I don't three thousand feet that low to the ground sounds a little uh, troublesome in a uh, with all that equipment. To be honest with you. Especially oh, so you would just rather be higher, like thirty six thousand, where you just yeah. Know then it. I have more time. I have more time if if we go down. There's a there's yeah. a there's a whole list of sins you got to ask forgiveness for before you hit the ground. <laughs> right. That's what he's yes. talking about. Yes, and, and I need to have so yeah. That's that's yeah. I gotta have more time. It's a long. It's a it's a litany. It's a litany. All right. Uh, happy birthday, Brad Durrett, my Me birthday too. brother. Absolutely. And uh, thank you for coming on here. Brad is excellent. Brad, give your email in case anybody wants to buy advertising. Uh, not not buy, invest in their business by uh, Brad at taking IBX us on media. as a partner. Com. Brad at there ibxmedia.com. So, or Brad, no, Brad at ibxmedia. Yeah, media.com. Yeah, com. yeah, yeah, that's, a, that's the, that's that's the ticket. ticket. Yeah. That's the ticket. Bradley the Durrett, ticket. by the way, could sell the uh, proverbial uh, – catch a popsicle to an Eskimo in white gloves in the Sudan. I don't know how the saying goes. <laughs> Wait, what? There are Eskimos in the Sudan? If that's, on what needed, if that's what they needed <laughs> right. to make their life better, I would be happy to right. help broker that right. deal. And it's not, you're not bought, you're investing in your business by partnering with us. That's what Absolutely. you're doing. All right. Uh, let's see. Thank you, Brad. Good to, good to have you on. So tonight, uh, the Pitt County baseball teams that are playing, you got 22 and 2. Rose hosting North Brunswick at the top of the hour. Also at the top of the hour, 19 and 4 South Central's at Cape Fear. 7 o'clock tonight, it'll be 20 and 3 DH Conley hosting Heritage. Uh, also, Farmville takes on Midway and Aiden Grifton meets North Lenore. Let's go now for more sports headlines to uh, Philip the Ref Pilkington, including a preview of uh, tonight's game between ECU and Tulane. Here's Pilk with a sports update and pirate report. Thank you, P-Man. We will start in Pirate Athletics where the baseball team will be back in action as they try and snap a two-game losing skid. Coach Godwin on how they will move forward after Tuesday's loss. You know, we're really good offensively, but we haven't been great the past two games, but we've been really good the past month. So um, we'll practice tomorrow and we'll get ready for two games. But, uh, you know, we got a really good team. We just got to get a little bit better tomorrow, and then we'll hit on the road and go practice at Tulane and be ready for Tulane on Friday. That game tonight can be heard right here on 94.3 The Game, a 7.15 airtime for that just after 7.30 first pitch. Same time tomorrow as well with Scott Rogers, and it'll be a 2 o'clock first pitch with a 1.45 airtime on Sunday. The Canes fell behind 3-0 last night after a 3-2 overtime loss to the Rangers as they allowed a goal by Artemi Panarin at 1.43 elapsed time in the first overtime period. The Canes will be back in action Saturday at 7 o'clock as they try to become the fifth team in NHL history to come back 
from a three games to none deficit. That'll do it for your 94.3 The Game Sports Flash Update and Pirate Report. On the other side of this timeout, Pitt County AD Rob Maloney will join us to talk about all the happenings going on in Pitt County Athletics. Winning to save thousands with a great rate. Get 0% financing at Greenville Toyota during the Great Rate Sales Event. Shop our massive inventory of new Toyotas, available as low as 0%. Hurry to Greenville Toyota today, where our volume saves you money. Acre Station Meat Farm, along with Lane Angus Beef, bring you Farm to Fork Beef. Stock your freezers now with affordable beef boxes, just in time for the grill and season. Farm to Fork Beef brings quality local beef to your family. From your traditional butcher shop, Acre Station Meat Farm. Come on down to Acre Station Meat Farm and find out why we're number one in fresh cuts and friendly service. Acre Station Meat Farm, Highway 32 North, Pine Town. Sometimes you just don't know if you want to kiss him or slap him. Either way, he'd probably like it. The Patrick Johnson Show on 94.3 The Game. All right. Uh, Rob Maloney, who was uh, well, Pitt County Director of Athletics for years, coached at Conley, was the AD there. Uh, women's basketball analyst on 94.3 The Game for ECU. And Rob, uh, welcome in. Is your back still sore from carrying Pilkington during the championship? basketball game. Uh, I'll tell you what, Patrick. First of all, it's great to be with you. And uh, Patrick was awesome. I mean, Patrick, he, Philip was, he was the one carrying the load. He was awesome. Quite a professional. Uh, you know, they always say, if you want to look good, surround yourself with great people. And so that's what I did. So we, we had a great time calling the Farmville Central Reedsville game, as well as the North Pitt East Burke game. And just uh, two great performances uh, by our local high schools, North Pitt girls winning a state championship, and and Farmville Central boys coming up just close. But what an amazing atmosphere! It was a great experience. I was working uh, softball that weekend and was uh, in the car after my broadcast, and um, it was nearing the half of your guys' uh, boys' game broadcast of Larry's Farmville team, and mm -hmm. it was like a pro game. Because, I yeah. mean, this one team would score, the other team would score. I mean, and then, you know, like jumpers and drives to the hoop, and it was crazy. So it had to be a it, lot of fun to play that game. The level of athleticism in that game was just amazing. And that was you know, the, 2A, the 2A state championship. And I would argue with anybody that that was probably by far the best contest that, that took place that entire weekend. And then you've got uh, a, uh, North Pitt winning a championship, and – uh, their leading scorer, the young lady going to state, was a uh, McDonald's All-American. And if that's not a yes. first for Pitt County, it's the first in a long time for Pitt County. Absolutely. And it's it's the first in my time. And then, you know, on top of her performance, you had a, you had a freshman in Jordan Speller at North Pitt that uh, just had an outstanding performance as well. And it was, again, very exciting. It was It was nice. See the communities, North Pitt, the the Bethel area, and uh, Farmville, and and even areas outside of, of both of those communities. But Pitt County in general uh, really did a great job of of getting out and getting up to Winston Salem, up to Wake Forest, and just creating almost a home environment for both schools. And what I really enjoyed it was neat to see in in the uh, hallway when the North Pitt girls and the Farmville Central boys were crossing paths. You could see the unity taking place there was a lot of pride a lot of pitt county and eastern north carolina pride there so it was a lot of fun great experience pilk where were you guys were you guys courtside pilk or did they have you like the mezzanine level no oh. we were courtside we were right next to one okay. of the benches okay very good all right mm -hmm. did pilk behave rob being that close to the action he, he he did. I thought he was going to make some calls to to Larry, uh, to Coach Williford, but uh, no, he he definitely behaved. We had we had a great time. We had a great vantage point, and as he said, we we were sitting right there uh, beside both North Pitt and Farmville Central benches, and it was just great to not only you know see the action, but to see our coaching staffs, you know, the way they were working the sidelines and timeouts and certain situations, and again, they just uh, both. 
both coaching staffs did a tremendous job. Well, you you both did a great job with that uh, broadcast. Okay. Uh, we've got Rob Maloney, uh, Pitt County Director of Athletics, with us uh, here. Uh, Rob, uh, the championships played in Winston-Salem in a Final Four format seems to have been universally embraced. Uh, they're going to return there for next year at least. Is that the best way to to operate the regional finals and then obviously the best home for the state finals now in your opinion? I, I think, well, and, and, I'm, and I'm glad you said that, your opinion. That's that's kind of the key because it depends on uh, what lenses you're, you're viewing this through. And uh, obviously, you know, I'm, I have a bias. I would love to see us have the Eastern Regionals at Minji's Coliseum. And I think a lot of people in my age bracket in Eastern North Carolina would love to have yeah. it over at East Carolina. Have, having Absolutely. said that, uh, the, the not to go educational speak, but the stakeholders – uh, in the process have overwhelmingly said that they would love to keep it in Winston Salem. And, the, and I think the thought is, is the experience for the kids and, uh, overwhelmingly the athletes and, uh, schools really love that final four feel. Uh, and, and, you know, you, you very few kids get to make, go to the next level and play college. So this is the closest thing they get to see, you know, next to watching college ball on TV and seeing the final four in the NCAA. Um, so, I would say this, the crowd did not uh, lead me to believe that it hurt us having it in Winston-Salem. Again, right. my personal bias is to keep it here in eastern North Carolina, and I'm sure there are probably folks in the western part of the state that feel the same way as I do uh, there. But it was it was a financial success uh, for the High School Athletic Association, and, um, and I didn't hear many complaints from uh, uh, school systems. Uh, right. About having to go in the middle of the week, and and I and I think that's always a concern when you got a you got a team that's playing in the afternoon on a school day. Um, you know, people being able to get off work and get there as well as getting out of class so early. Uh, but it seemed to work out, and I, and I know it was an outlier type of day for for any school system, uh, but it seemed to work out. I know the folks at Wake Forest University absolutely loved it. On my on my exit from the facility, I ran into a number of different employees there, and and yeah. it, kind of the common theme was, "We hope you're back next year. We hope to have you guys back next." This has been a wonderful experience. So, um, again, I, I, I think we'll see it continue for the near future. Now, when when the realignment occurs and we have yeah. eight classifications as opposed to four, now there's going to have to be some changes that will occur, and we'll see where that goes. You you might see two different state championship locations like you see in baseball and softball, uh, football, right. or you may see a return to the old Eastern and Western regionals. We'll see. Yeah. I, I would think you're, you're back to splitting the thing. It just, I, I think if you yeah. can keep it in that triad, at least the championship rounds, uh, I, I to me, right. that is, is the most equitable, but, uh, as far as travel, yeah, I, and, and I that kind of thing. So, yeah. Uh, Rob Maloney, sure. Pitt County, uh, schools AD is with us uh, here. Uh, you mentioned the uh, realignment eight classifications uh, with the uh, Big 32. We had Chris Hughes on last week to talk about uh, that and what it means. And that's really the biggest. It's, it's kind of a triangle. Uh, Charlotte, maybe some triad schools in that Big 32, and then everybody else. Where do you see the Pitt County schools, you know, right now in early possibilities of realignment? Yeah, I'm I'm very confident that in, in this. You know, I want to warn our public: this is going to be very a very out of the box experience for everyone because you know I'm 55 years old and all I've known is four classifications in North Carolina: 1A, 2A, 3A, and 4A. And so when I when I say these numbers or these classifications, it's really going to make your eyes pop. Um, but so for the Pitt County schools, I see uh, Conley and South Central falling into the 7A classification. So they will just be a step below the big 32 and, and Rose could also fall into the seven a I've seen, I've seen Rose anywhere from the seven a to the six day classification. Right. Um, right. I have a gut feeling they'll be in the seven a here, regardless, they'll probably still be grouped in the same uh, conference or league. Um, as far as North Pitt, Farmville Central and Aiden Grifton, where they are currently two a schools, We'll see them jump up to probably the 4A classification, um, and and I, I think again when it all shakes out, they'll probably be in a similar type grouping or conference 
uh, as they are currently, you know, with some of the, the other area, Eastern North Carolina high schools that are, you know, closer related. They, the, the good thing for our two, a, our current two A high schools, Farmville Central, North Pitt, and Aiden Griffin, is yep. there, there's a plentiful grouping of high schools of that size in Eastern North Carolina. That's the problem you run into with the South Centrals, the Newburn High Schools, and Conley's. There aren't many schools of that size east of Raleigh, you know, and, and so you run into that a little bit of an issue. They'll probably be in a combination league, kind of similar to what they are now. You don't want to go to Wilmington also. I mean, that just would You be do not a... want to go to Wilmington. Uh, that's right. And and the Wilmington schools, you know, east of Raleigh, that's what you're looking at. There's, uh, you know, Conley, South Central, and Newburn, And after those schools, Wilmington's the closest thing. So right. we'll do everything in our power. Uh, I, I'm, don't, you know, the realignment committee has not been officially named as of yet. Uh, but so the process will occur with the 24-25 school year this coming year will be the study they'll put everything together and we should find out next spring what the the new <laughs> platform will look like and then we will start that following year do you believe rob that uh with with the split that it uh i mean would include rose would it include havelock i mean in other words would it be very very similar to what it is now and then you know maybe the wilson area schools i, I don't know i mean is that does that well, seem to make the most yeah, sense it, it, it does make sense. And I, and I think that's, you know, always, always the goal. But when you're, when you're dealing now with eight classifications, this, it is going to be a tall, tall task. Um, with the new rule, like, so for, let me give you an example. Currently, uh, Rose and South Central and Conley are in a 4A, 3A combination league. With this right. new eight classification system, it is possible to have a league made up of as many as three classifications. Oh wow! So you could have, te- yeah, you you could technically have, you know, a five A, six A, seven A league. So, Rob, so I do have one it, question it, that relates to that. Sure. You know, right now you have a three A and a four A champion, and that helps you with playoff seating. If you have three classifications, what if say your six A champion only wins two games in league play? Would they still be given a really high seed in the in the state well, tournament, or would they be a little more uh, realistic when it comes to this? I think the entire system is going to change in how we decide that. So, and that's a very good question, and it's a very common question, Philip. Um, I, I think rather you, you might, and I don't want to, don't put this in in writing, but I think you might see a shift from what we know as conferences and to more move to more what other states do when they have in districts or regions. And I think when you look in your playoff uh, seedings now, you're going to go more off of the formulas as opposed to this person, this school won the, uh, you know, big Carolina 3A, 4A championship. I think it's going to probably end up being less of that because of the fact that there will be so many potentially 3A or three classification conferences. And the reason they're looking at having to potentially do that is to try to reduce the traffic, you know, the travel time. So, again, uh, that has not been determined yet officially of how they're going to do that, uh, but it is being discussed, you know, what the formula will be for playoff uh, seedings and whatnot. Uh, Rob Maloney, Pitt County Director of Athletics, is with us here. Really quick, uh, Rob, uh, a, an, emer- an emerging sport around the country is flag football, particularly for girls. Uh, yes. What, what, what can you tell us about that potential in Pitt County? Well, I am extremely excited. Uh, just this week, I've had a, a meeting with representatives from the Carolina Panthers. And uh, so we, we've been awarded. We're going to be able to take advantage of a grant through the Panthers uh, so that we're, we're going to next year start our first uh, flag football league. And we are collaborating with uh, Beaufort County and Craven County school systems. So Keith Mitchell in Beaufort County schools and Tim Bennett, the AD down in Craven County schools, the three of us have, have done a lot of talk you know, behind the scenes over the last year about wanting to do something. So um, we met with Carolina Panthers, and we've all been approved. And what I'm looking at doing is having a four- to five-week season uh, in next November into December. And uh, we have created 
a big mega league. And, and again, this is not a, an official North Carolina High School Athletic Association sport yet. But uh, I'll bet all the money in the world is coming. And uh, we're so excited. Um, so what we've done is, and this is the, I'm going to let you in on the early announcement. So we've created two divisions. We have a West Division, which will consist of the Pitt County Schools. So Aiden Grifton, Conley, Formal Central, J.H. Rose, North Pitt, and South Central. That will be your West Division teams. The East right. Division team, teams will be Havelock, Newburn, Northside, Southside, Washington and West Craven. And oh, so wow. you'll play with the, yeah. And so we'll, you'll we'll play within your division and we'll play these games on Saturdays at a centralized location. We did those divisions like that so that we could reduce travel. We want to make this as financially uh, safe as we possibly can for all the girls and all the schools. So there'll be a location at each division and it'll occur basically all day Saturday. And each school will play multiple games each Saturday. And then we are hoping to culminate on uh, bring it all together on December 14th. And uh, we're working to find that location. I, I'm hoping maybe it – and I've talked a little bit with our friends at East Carolina that maybe we can have a championship Saturday to bring the East-West divisions today together for an all-day tournament and have the big championship right there. So – um, oh, wow. We're excited. Yeah, it's officially been approved, and uh, it's going to happen regardless of where the championship location is. We will be playing this league next fall. Uh, our our Pitt County Schools uh, high school athletic directors have been very supportive of this, and uh, they're going to get everything kicked up and going, and we'll be having a, a grand announcement surely uh, next fall. That's a cool deal there. Thank you for allowing us oh. to uh, to let everybody know, and uh, we'll, we'll certainly get behind it. I think it's a great thing. Well, absolutely, and and we've structured it too, and, and we're trying to be, uh, you know, very safe. It, it's tough because you have, you know, obviously your three athletic seasons, and uh, we will our our official tryout period will be the week after winter sports has already started. So that way, our athletes will have a chance to go out for you know girls basketball and. You have women's wrestling now. So they'll have all those opportunities with their winter sports at their schools. And then we'll start this flag football initiative a week later and, uh, you know, give this, you know, each school time to assemble, assemble ball teams. Uh, a girls flag football team is going to be about 14, uh, individuals, 14 players. And we are going to keep it at one team per high school in year one. Now, uh, once we, you know, work out all the wrinkles, and get year one under our belt, maybe we'll expand in year two. But we are extremely, extremely excited about this. I think it's a great uh, idea, and congratulations uh, to you and the others uh, on getting that done. Hey, Rob, uh, thank you so much. Always great to talk to you. We'll get you back on soon. Always an honor. Uh, Thanks for having me. All right. That's awesome. Great Rob Maloney. How cool is that, Pilk? I think it's football, awesome. Like yeah. football league. Yeah, that's, I was that's texting with really Rob awesome. yesterday and told him that uh, I have family in southwestern Arizona, and it's recently become a women's state-sponsored yeah. sport in Arizona, and it's a hit. They're loving it. It's a huge hit in uh, places like there in Alabama also. Hey, thanks to Brad Durrett for being on with us. Thanks to uh, Michael Busimi for the Talk of the Town clip. Thanks to Rob Maloney. Thanks to Pilk. Happy Mother's Day to all the moms out there. Have a safe and happy Mother's Day weekend, everybody. We'll see you back Monday morning, Talk of the Town, and then right here Monday on the PJ Show.